Hey, what's up? It's Daniel, and in today's tutorial, I'll be walking you through migrating your web app from a Firebase backend to a GraphQL backend. So currently, I have this um, Firebase, um, this view app with a Firebase backend. Let me just um, change directory into the Firebase demo app and um, yarn serve it to run it locally. So this app is basically just showing um, some basic create and read operations on the Firebase real-time database. And I'll be showing you how to migrate that from Firebase to GraphQL. So it's run on our locals and um, it's nothing complicated. It's just um, some names and we can add more names. We can add like David. And I like Sally, and you can remove names too. Yeah. Smith, Jane. Yeah. So that's basically it. And and remove names. So if you go to your Firebase console, that's firebase.google.com. You be able to see all this data in a real-time database. So I have my real-time database here. I have my real-time database here, and all the names you can see in the app: Daniel, David, Shelley are here. So um, we'll be using this um, documentation. See, Hasura has this really easy um, process of like quickly and intuitively migrating from a Firebase backend to the Hasura GraphQL engine for the GraphQL backend. So we'll just be following this. But before we do this, of course, we have to get um, the GraphQL engine running. Um, we'll do this on DigitalOcean. The documentation says you can do it on Heroku too. Um, but I'll be doing this on DigitalOcean. It's this really one-click um, launch of the whole Hasura engine. So if you check out my previous video, I was showing how to migrate from the Heroku cluster to the DigitalOcean droplet. So pick our site and we'll just name this Firebase. Delete that and create. Yeah, okay. It will take a bit of time. So um, while the droplet is being created, we're just going to read through basic and get a basic overview of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so we create the GraphQL engine and we export the data from our real-time database. It, that'll be exported in the form of a JSON file. And then um, we'll use the CLI to import the data. And then that's it. Okay. So um, initially, you're supposed to do an NPN install of Firebase to GraphQL. So if you haven't done that, just make sure you run this command in your terminal. I've already run it, so there'll be no need. So let's check on our cluster. All right, so the cluster is main. Let's just copy that link and try and access our API Explorer. Okay, so sometimes it says the droplet is made, but it isn't. So we'll just check that out. Okay. I don't think it's up yet. So that's why this isn't working. Yeah, okay, now it's up. So this is our API Explorer. Um, this is like a GUI for the Sort of graphql where you can look at you can enter sql commands 
can look at the tables when they are available but right now the only thing we need to pay attention to is this um, URI which we use to access the which we use as our endpoint actually so to the docs we have um, our URI we've kept uh, we've kept a note of that so now we just need to export the JSON from our database so back to the console export JSON and a file should be downloaded depending on how much data you have this file will be bigger or smaller so all right so now I'll switch over to video studio code I'll stop running this and I'll change directory to here so I already have my JSON file here and I renamed it database.json so all we need to do now is go over to the documentation and check out the command we're supposed to run okay so let's just copy that and paste it in our terminal so there's a few things we have to edit um, the first one is the name of the JSON file I named mine database and that's the directory it's in my current root directory so I don't need to do all this um, so just make that relative to where you've kept yours and then we have to get the endpoint URI here let's copy that and come and paste it there yeah cool so just make sure the normalized flag is kept and then you can run this so don't worry if npx is not installed it will install it this usually takes a bit of time yeah well surprisingly it did not oh, okay that was something else okay yeah Okay, put the wrong URI, my bad. I'm just supposed to put the URL of the console, not the whole endpoint. All right, so let's run that again. Nice, okay, so everything is migrated, done, done, done. So just keep that in mind. I made the error of um, putting the whole endpoint, um, the whole GraphQL endpoint when it just wanted the link to the GraphQL engine here so don't make that mistake so now if we go back to our um, API Explorer and we check out the data we have the names folder with all the names we had in the Firebase demo from this database and everything now is in our Postgres database and we have access to it over a GraphQL endpoint nice so now um, let's get it working with uh, GraphQL. So let's just close this. It still works, by the way. We can remove. We can add. Um, Gina. So how do you spell Gina? Okay. Yeah. So let's close this and this because I think we won't be needing it anymore. And now we get our GraphQL app running. So let's do yarn serve and wait for it to compile and start the server. Okay, pretty quick this time, which is great. Let's check it out. All right, yeah, okay, so it won't work because we have not added the, the URI to main.js. So let's just go and copy. Now we want to copy the whole endpoint address, everything, and paste that in the app. Save it and let it run. Great, let's check it out now. Nice, so Daniel, David, Sally, Smith, Jane, all showing on the GraphQL demo. So we can add more names. I don't really know many names. 
So at Sally again, come the capital, and Sally shows up. So now let's remove the smaller Sally, and Sally goes away. So if you check out the data, there's ID that's different. So the way I did this is I used, um, let me just go to my hello group view. Uh, and I used something uh, that generates random keys and puts that in as the ID. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to add an entry into the database because the primary key holds has to be unique. So this was just something off the top of my head that I did. But there's obviously a better way of doing this. And um, that's pretty much how to migrate. So there's a few things when um, changing um, the way the app works from Firebase because with GraphPure you have to do things like mutations and um, queries and or subscriptions. So I have a file here called graphpure.js and it has all the mutations and the syntax and um, the format and that's what helps um, query or mutate data into the app. So I did a blog post about that. I'll put it in the uh, description. So just check that out if you want to learn how to do or use mutations and queries on your view GraphQL projects. Yeah, so that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Ciao.